Hello, everyone. Just wanted to hop in before we officially start the podcast episode to let you know this episode was pre recorded during a Collecting Weekly After Dark live stream. If you guys recall, earlier in the year, I mentioned how I had been in the works of figuring out a podcast collab that I was very excited about. And guess what? It finally happened. I spoke with Zach and Dean of the Collecting Weekly podcast on their After Dark show for their Patreons. For their patrons? Patreons? For their patrons on Patreon. I think that's what it is. (laughs) Anyways, I I chatted with them on at their After Dark show and we decided to just turn it into one of my podcast episodes. So without further ado, finally, the collaboration I've been waiting essentially almost on half a year for. Uh, here is part one of my conversation with Zach and Dean of the Collecting Weekly podcast. And yeah, let's go ahead and start the show officially. Hello, everybody. Welcome to another episode of the Life and Curly Cues podcast with me, Eileen. Uh, today, we have a very fun episode. I am with some of the hosts, or actually, you guys are like the hosts from yeah. Collecting Weekly. And so today, we are going to chat with them. We're actually doing a live stream right now on their uh, network, and I'm excited. But let's just go ahead and right into it. Um, For my listeners, I know all of you guys streaming right now, you guys know Dean and Zach. My listeners don't really know Dean and Zach. So why don't you guys just introduce yourselves a little bit? Just like a quick 15 second speech. (laughs) Uh, Yeah, I'm Dean. I've been podcasting about two years now. Uh, Super professional. Um, Like super handsome. And that's about it. (laughs) That's all I have to offer the world. (laughs) I love it. It's great. Great introduction. Thanks. Wow. That was, there was some truth. There was some lies. Well, I, <laughs> well, uh, well leave it my name is Zach. Time. I am uh, the host of the Collecting Weekly podcast. Uh, Dean and I have been doing this for, like I said, about two, two and a half years. And uh, we talk about toys, um, mostly uh, higher end toys. So we collect uh, from companies called like Hot Toys and Sideshow and uh we pretty much just buy their stuff and there's so much news like every week because we do talk about so many different companies uh that we have a show called collecting weekly and and every tuesday night we uh just kind of chit chat and give our thoughts on the week's news and uh it's been going pretty good for us yeah yeah it's pretty cool how it's like there's a whole universe for all of this dude the world of collecting is insane uh yeah I remember when we first started the podcast, we were like, can we really do this every week? Like, can we keep content going? Dude, we've never run out of things to talk about. That's so true. And the fact that you guys have so many shows on your network, too, just shows that. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Well, like Zach said, we do a lot of higher end stuff. And a lot of people, majority, I would say, don't collect high end stuff. They do like, you know, the cheaper end figures. So we have a show about that. And then some people collect things that, art toys like shoes or stamps or whatever and so we have a show about that and it's just yeah we've never really run out of things to talk about it's insane <laughs> yeah we also have uh we have a few different shows so we also have uh small talk which like being said is for like the smaller figures uh we have a a good group of uh english guys that run a, a show that's like identical to our show but from a uk collector's perspective so they're in the united kingdom yeah they deal uh, with a whole bunch of other issues that we that's don't have to pretty about. cool i didn't know that part yeah, yeah he was actually our first international listener all yeah. right and we reached out to him and he just became part of the show and then eventually was like dude do you want to like run your own branch of the show because you have insights that we don't know about and that's so, true yeah. yeah, and then we also have a comics show, collecting comics, and then we have a horror podcast with like real paranormal experiences that we've all had or other people have had, and it's pretty wild. And then we also any... play Dungeons and Dragons. Yeah, <laughs> Dungeons and Dragons is so fun. Do you have any That's paranormal stories? I've never paranormal stories. Um, 
I think, I don't know, because I've described this story and some people are like, oh, you just had sleep paralysis. And I'm like, but I don't feel like I did. Like, I feel like it was a paranormal experience for me because I could have sworn like I saw a figure over my body and I felt like the figure was pushing me down. A lot of people have had those. I'm I'm shocked. And when I describe it, people are like, oh, no, you just had sleep paralysis. And I'm like, but I was laying in bed. My eyes were open. Everything was dark. My door was slightly propped more than it was before I went to bed. And then I couldn't move. And I felt like the the, the force or whatever, I felt it moving from like my toes all the way up and just holding oh, yeah. me down. Yeah, that's wild. Yeah. yeah. It sounds a little bit like sleep paralysis because that's happened to me. I didn't see anything, but I've definitely experienced it. Mm-hmm. That's wild. Yeah, yeah, we have we have like stories like that on that podcast. It's really fun. Yeah, that one I like listening to because I'm like, whoa, wait a second. (laughs) Especially here in San Antonio, is there's so yeah, there's so many. I'm here, so you know the. I mean, we're not going to get into my topic at all at this point. (laughs) (laughs) That's the beauty of it. (laughs) You know that um, the La Llorona like myth of like crying lady bridge and all that stuff i think we talked about that in our first episode yeah Yeah. so my house or like my neighborhood we're right next to women hollering creek oh which i just i mean before i did any research on this creek just the name alone i was terrified to drive down the street because it's a straight country road no lights nothing and it's just darkness and i'm always thinking someone's gonna pop out and like just kidnap me in the middle right behind an air force base like why not And I researched it because my class that I'm in right now had me researching watersheds. And so I reached, I researched this Creek and this Creek has the same La Llorona story where it's like, it's woman hollering Creek because someone was attacked, their baby got taken. And it's the woman's cries of her baby being taken from her and killed. And I'm just like, so La Llorona just happened in every single water system between here and Mexico, basically. Yeah. Yeah. Look, man, you said the cuckoo is here. (laughs) <laughs> I mean, I don't doubt it. <laughs> Dean, speaking of Kukui, look at what just dropped on uh, Hot Toys. Dude, some, yeah, Sean Yahtzee said this in the chat. Why are those legs look different? Wait, explain. Uh, that. That's the so so one of the companies, like we said, is Hot Toys, but they're they're in the middle of virtual con because of COVID. Everything yeah. is like remote right now, and so they just dropped this uh, from Far From Home when uh, Peter Parker is being attacked on the okay. stereo. He has that vision of. Uh, Tony Stark in like a zombie, like when he's dead and his like oh, armor is all yes. rusty. And so they, uh, damn, that looks dope. Yeah, they just put that up right now. So there's there's some cool stuff that's dropping tonight. But for our listeners who um, who don't know you, do you want to tell them what your show is mainly about and where yeah. they can find it? Yeah. So my show, as I mentioned a little bit earlier, is called Life and Curly Cues, and I also started this show a uh, like. A year and a half almost two years ago and this show i wanted to focus more on adulting i was not so fresh out of college it had been a long time but i still felt like i was still experiencing lots of adulting things and growing up still even though i have like a degree and i have a full-time yeah. job and so i wanted to start interviewing friends hopefully eventually people who are just acquaintances and stuff as well. But I've been interviewing friends and asking them about their adulting experiences and then just having just a casual conversation about life and what's happening in like society at that time of recording. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, it's just, I really like to talk if you can't tell. And it was a great outlet for me. I needed a hobby and I started it and I went full force. (laughs) And now here we are. I'm like, 30 something episodes in i think i'm doing all right so how how often do you record my episode is a bi-weekly podcast okay um yeah so i record sometimes i'll record the day i'm supposed to post a podcast but that's because <laughs> life gets in my way oh yeah 100 yeah. percent. yeah but it was a great way to be able to balance my priori- my priorities and just make sure I can manage my time my time properly because full time job and then also everything else that's happening. I just was like, let me set yeah. my pace. And I also had never really heard of a lot of bi weekly podcasts. I always listen to weekly podcasts. Right. So I was like, that's kind of cool because then it could be longer because you're not giving them content every week. 
That's yeah, true. For sure. Mm-hmm. For sure. Yeah, we yeah. uh I I feel like I could never do bi-weekly anytime like we don't really take Tuesdays off that often, but sometimes we will for one reason or another another take a Tuesday off, but we always have a backlog ready to go like pre-recorded content yeah. or whatever. Um but getting back into the groove after taking a week off is like the hardest thing. Like I'm just like I don't want to do the slides. I don't want to do the show sheet. I just want to like half ass the show and like I need to be like every week. Otherwise, yeah. Uh, I mean, the news backs up fast if you take Oh, for off. sure. Yeah. Because yeah. we'll usually record Tuesday night. By the time our show is ending, there's a something bunch new. of news is already dropping. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Sometimes during like... the show, we have to like add the slides in real quick, like live. It's, it's amazing. Yeah. It's, it's wild. So taking a, taking a night off is almost like, should we like yeah. we're gonna get oh. a night off but we're also gonna have to work like twice as hard the next week to cram next. everything in and then not only that but then the podcasts that maybe uh record later in the week are already gonna have a one-up on us That's so true. it's like do we want to cover first or do we not care like yeah it's which hard. makes complete sense yeah the luxury about mine is that I can pre-record. I mine aren't live, and then yeah, mine are just conversations. And there are I've had in the past since I've started, there have been times where I have no motivation to do an episode, or I just don't have a guest lined up, so I skip an episode. So then I don't have something posted for like a month, basically, before my next episode, uh-huh. and so it feels like so long. So that kind of feeling is like maybe I should change it to weekly. But I just still really like it as far as like my structure and being how, able to plan everything. How do you feel about it in the current state of the world? Because I think without podcasting and virtually talking to people every week, I think I would have gone crazy by now. It's the, the current state of the world definitely put me in a funk at the beginning of trying to figure out how I was going to record podcasts because mine. I invite people to my house to record an episode with me or oh, I'll travel okay. to them because my yeah, equipment we used to do it. Yeah, my equipment is portable so I can take it with me to someone's house. And so I'll set up and it's usually like a very cozy setup. We're like sitting in chairs and we're like facing each other and we're just chatting it up. And so when Corona struck and I was like, shit, how do I go about recording people and then I was in the process of changing my um, audio interfaces so that I could use something that's more handheld versus the giant brick that I had started with yeah and so then I was transitioning that and then I started doing phone calls and I had like my phone propped up right here and then my microphone was attached on the other end and I was like I don't like this because then I can't look at my phone on my notes because if I move my phone you won't be able to hear anybody. Yeah, the audio yeah. is going to be all janky, yeah. Yeah, and so then the last episode I just did, I FaceTimed my friend and I had this set up to where it could hear my voice and her um, audio from the microphone and the speakers. And it worked. I think it came out okay. So I was like, okay, this is going to have to do it for now, but it still feels weird because I'm such a, I'm, I'm such a personable person. Like I have to actually see the person to be able to like feel more comfortable and happy about what i'm doing in a way. yeah we were talking about the future of how we're gonna keep doing this and yeah for the most part we we'll probably just stick to this for a while but i also i like tuesdays like getting in my car driving across town hanging yeah. out with Zach for a few hours I and bet. enjoying the ride home back like <laughs> i live for that i love driving is like my favorite pastime so yeah i'll it's i'll do true. that any day of the week so when zach was like oh we'll probably keep it like this i was like oh man well it's a matter of there's there's a few things like i mean obviously one you're still trying to get your truck from your accident like a new truck so that's that's the first thing and then the the larger thing is covid has to be something that we can do safely and Mm -hmm. you know right right now that's not really something we can guarantee especially given we are the hottest zone right now i think Um, i think we're flattening the curve again i was read today I don't believe anything. I feel like that's true. <laughs> everything is just going to straight shit. Like yeah. it's just Eileen. It's bad. Um, what kind of equipment do you use? I know, like we, I, I always geek out talking to people about equipment. Uh, you said that you change your setup to be more portable. 
Yeah. So I'm still learning terminology and everything um, uh -huh. because I don't do as much research on anything until I'm like, oh, I should probably change things. So currently go. I'm using the Zoom H5. Oh, I love it. I got the H6. It's so dope. It's yeah, I casting for us. I really like it. And I think I got it after I had a conversation with you at the last uh, meetup yeah, we yeah, were yeah. at. Yeah, because yeah. you had gotten me onto it. And then I started looking at it more. And then I was like, screw it. I'm investing in it because mm -hmm. what I had before only had one microphone outlet. And I use microphones with XLR cables. Yeah. And so it had one outlet. So I had bought a splitter mm -hmm. to be able to connect to both microphones when I would have a guest mm -hmm. and then adjusting audio because I'm louder than other people. Just, ugh, I hated it. It was the worst. Yeah. And so this allowing me to have four ways to connect four different microphones and control the volumes of all four. Wait, so you have the H6 or the H5? I have the H5, but with the H5, you can get the adapter. Oh, you have the XY splitter? Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay, I got you. I got you. So, I mean, I haven't bought it yet because I <laughs> haven't reached a point to have four guests on my podcast yet. Yeah. But eventually, yeah. So right now I just have what, what it came with, which is like the little um, x yeah y one that goes like this. oh okay yeah mm -hmm. so we're we use h6 and once we start getting in person again for our bigger shows because we we used to do live shows uh at comic stores i think i'm gonna buy the uh the splitter so we can have six microphones and that then we'll get nice. to buy one more mic and that would be that'd be fantastic and then we just dean and i both just upgraded our mics um dean i heard about that before covid and then i up upgraded right about when covid happened and I love it. It's so nice. Yeah, I heard you guys geeking out about it on your. I think it was like the After Dark that you guys posted on YouTube or something. Yeah, I watched that one, and I was uh, like, look at them just nerding out over their microphones. Oh, uh, and then the boom <laughs> arms. That was the big thing, the boom arms, because we had I had this janky one that was like free with this mic that I bought, mm -hmm. and it worked fine for like a day, and then like just fucking fell apart, like just just like a very rapid decline. So yeah. we we upgraded to these, but. uh yeah, enough about tech stuff. Tech stuff. I know <laughs> no one really cares about that. But let's get into it's, the meat and potatoes. Uh, my goodness. Of this interview. Yeah. So let's get to the main topic, and then we can keep chit chatting about everything else. Because yeah. I did have a thought just now, and then it went away. So it's going to come oh, back to me it, later when y'all are talking. <laughs> no, it's good. This happens to me all the time, all the time. Um. So in my podcast, the big question I ask everybody, all of my guests, I ask them. What was a moment or the moment where you felt like, shit, I'm an adult now. This is real. There's no going back type of thing. And I think we decided Dean's going first. So, I know. Dean. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I mean, I still kind of don't feel like I'm totally there. I mean, I talk about toys on a weekly basis. <laughs> but um, I think living by myself in my own place uh and then switching over my internet to my name oh yeah that would be that would be a big moment right like, there okay, for like, sure. i'm paying for my own internet now like that's cool that's um, true i mean it totally sucks but, you know, <laughs> um but yeah especially because so, you need the high speed stuff to do all this too yeah and game online and stuff. Yep. dirty dirty websites <laughs> <laughs> hey, <man. laughs> um yeah there's, so there's no judgment here my friend i was gonna say dude our moms listen to this podcast <laughs> well Hi, your mom, mom does my mom <laughs> yeah my mom listens she's in the show uh she's usually in the chat every week but um yeah it just that was kind of it but even then i'm still kind of like i mean i don't know i don't feel like i'm an adult yeah I mean, it's, it's, it's valid. Like there are moments where I'm like, okay, yeah, I'm an adult now. But then there are moments where I'm like, no, I don't think so. Like, yeah. for example, my moment, which I haven't talked about since like my very first episode, my moment was when I bought my car, my very first car, because I had gotten a job like that, uh, that July, by October, I had enough <laughs> money saved to put a down payment by myself on the car and I've been paying for the car by myself ever since minus like the one or two months or the three months I was unemployed and could not afford to pay it by myself yeah but that was kind of my like and I did that my sophomore year of college so that was like oh, oh wow. okay I guess I gotta get my life together and figure it out yeah 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 I was <sighs> I never finished school um 
because I was gonna, I was an art major, and I was like, <laughs> "What am I really like? If you're good at art, you're gonna you're make good, it. You're good at it. Yeah, yeah. You don't need a piece of paper saying, "Look what I did." It's mm-hmm. like, here's my portfolio. I know what I'm talking about. Yeah, you don't need a twenty thousand dollar paper to tell you that. Yeah, and so I was like, I, I'm not in any debt. I haven't taken any loans out for school yet. I'm just going to take a, a, I'm just going to stop going to school until I know what I want to do for a living. And okay. I, th- that was like 10 years ago. I know I'm back <laughs> at school. Uh, and luckily I have a career now. Um, I got lucky. Um, I'm a, uh, and, and well, I don't know. Nepotism. I want to, I don't want to say I'm an engineer, but I work with engineers on airplanes. I mean, in a way you could say you're an engineer, like a project engineer, but I'm yeah. not like a, mathematical not full on, yeah or mechanical dean, dean still won't get me a job at that company <laughs> yeah it's, uh, it's my stepdad's company but um we try to keep like family owns so um, okay wow but even okay. even then i still don't feel like like I, you're I'm, an adult yeah it's i don't know maybe i'm crazy I don't think you're crazy because I think it definitely hits people at different times. Like I think some of my bosses I'm with right now, they're also like, I don't know. And they are like way ahead in life. And I'm just like, how do you not feel that you're an adult yet? You're doing so much. And you you, have a mortgage. Yeah. You have (laughs) kids, you have a house, you have everything. You've paid off a car. Like how is that not a thing for you? Yeah. But I guess it's just how people look at it. I don't know. I'm curious to see what Zach has to say. I know. Thank you so much for sharing, Dean. He's one of the, you, man, yeah. you made it seem like you had nothing to share when we were talking whoa, whoa, about it before. Dean wasn't going to give me a compliment. Just finish that out for me. Real <laughs> oh, quick. I was just going to say, I, you're probably one of my most put together friends. Re- wow. wow. Really? You, have, you have a house. You have a wife. You have cars that you've bought. In, you have a child, a dog. You have a fish. yard that you take care of. You know what, what I mean. What kind like, of fish do you have? A clownfish and a uh, orchid dotty back. They're adorable. Ooh, oh, yeah. I was He's an aquatic full... biology major, so I love talking about fish. Oh, nice. Yeah, I got a yeah. restink in my house. Um, nice. So for me, I feel like there's like like stages, right? So moving out for college was like a stage, but I never felt like I was growing up in college because whenever I need anything, you just call your mom, right? You call your dad. Uh, and I did I did live far away for a little bit. Like I lived in Galveston. That's like a four hour drive. And um, I um, I just never really felt like I was grown up. And, you know, I had gotten engaged in college and then that kind of just didn't work out. And I just still never really felt like an adult. So finished school, got married to my wife. But I still didn't really feel grown up doing that because for the first like six months after we got married, we lived with my parents. Okay. Um, we had we had a chance to rent um, this uh, really nice apartment and it fell through last minute and we were just kind of bummed and, you know, we just kind of like put off like finding another one for a bit and just saved up some money. Um, you know, we got our apartment and I still like we still lived close to home and like we could still like call your parents for things. Um, but I felt like the time that I really felt like, hey, I'm a grown up now. Um, there's, there's two parts of that. So having a kid, like, because you leave the hospital and they kind of just like, they just throw you, you into it. Yeah. yeah. They're like, well, here's your folder with all your documents and, uh, we'll send you the bill and you know, now Good you're luck. on your own. Yeah. And you have this human and, you know, I mean, obviously you're not teaching them everything cause they go to daycare and they have other people in their lives, but pretty much like their concept of like good and bad and right and wrong and and the things that they learn the things that they like and the things that they do are pretty much molded from the ground up by you so like my kid loves uh dinosaurs she loves uh you know the things that i love she loves like Mm. robots and stuff and it's funny because she takes some of my toys to daycare and just flexes so hard on these kids. Like they have like the crappiest toys. And then she she's shows the up. cool kid in school. Yeah, she's the cool kid. But I, I, I will say this. I really felt like a grown up. And it happened like maybe a month ago. I was at my dad's house, my mom and dad's house. And my dad yelled at me. And I was like, whoa, don't do that. And I was like, <laughs> your dad never yelled at you in front of your kid. Don't ever yell at me in front of my kid. 
And that was the moment. Like, it wasn't an ugly exchange, but it was mm-hmm. like, hey, I'm like, you can't do that to me in front of my kid. Yeah. Because that sets like a very weird like precedent. And so when that happened, there was like a mutual respect of like, hey, you're a dad with your kid. Like, I have to treat you like you're a parent now. And for me, that was like, that was the first time that I really felt, um, you know, really like a, hey, like I'm a grown up now because I have that respect from my parents. Yeah. But uh, yeah, it was, uh, it, it's crazy. Being a parent is crazy. Like it's, it's literally the craziest thing. I can only imagine. I mean, I only see the kids for like five hours in a day and I can only imagine what it's like when they're not at the school for five hours in a day. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. And and COVID has made things uh, interesting because, you know, a lot of people are working from home. And so like when when usually when I would get home from uh, work, I, I would get off a little bit earlier than than my wife. And I would usually have like an hour to two with my daughter by myself, which was really fun because we could like do dad daughter stuff mm-hmm. but now we get home and and everyone's here like my wife is here the dog's running around like no one can and, leave yeah no we can't do anything so it's like in a way i feel like my daughter and i have like grown a little bit apart because of covid because we don't have that like hour or two by ourselves of just like me and her watching tv or like dicking around in the backyard but also it's nice because we're like all together and it's like I don't know. It's it COVID has just been so weird that um you know with with everything and Quinn says it's a crazy cool like realism drop on you that your dad yeah. acknowledges a respect. Yeah, it was it was a very interesting thing, but I was just like, whoa, 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 whoa. Like immediately, I didn't even have to think about it. I was like what what what, what just I, happened? I feel like that's another aspect of it too, the fact that it came to you instinctly, like it just yeah. right on the spot. You know, yeah, I was have so to, like, offended. I was like, whoa, 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 whoa. Wait a whoa. second. I was like, no, sir, that is not happening today. Yeah. Well, thank you for sharing your stories with me. Um, They're very interesting. I've actually never had any of those types of stories before. So I like hearing new stories that follow that flow. Um, But one thing I forgot to mention before I asked the big question was how we all know each other. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's kind of important. Like, why is this random girl just on your live stream right now? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so we know each other from the circle. So Facebook selected people from all over the world to be in this uh, leadership group for admins. And then they took it a step further, like a while after, like almost like a few months, six months, maybe. And they made it into individual circles for major cities. And San Antonio was one of those cities because your mom was, is really active with like Facebook. I call my mom a celebrity. Yeah, not like like, she has the blue check mark. Yeah, she's she's, she's Facebook official. She's, she's met verified. Do you really have a blue check mark? She oh, yeah. is verified. No, Dang. it's for real. Yo, can yeah. you give me a blue check mark? <laughs> for real though. Dude, can, you, can you give me a blue check mark? I'm over here waiting for mine because I'm associated with her. I'm associated by association. So um Sean says COVID has been good and bad. My daughter's about to turn one next week, so I've got to see her grow through those stages much more than I did with my son. Nice. Happy birthday to Yeah, happy early uh, birthday. Yeah. Your daughter. Yeah, but um, unfortunately, the circle is no more. I think they shut that program yeah, down. They which did. Is, which is so dumb. Like, we spent like $200 every other month. Like, yeah. that is not even a drop I, in the bucket. I feel Facebook. like they kind of overstepped their toes, I guess, in a way. Or maybe I'm thinking of the wrong term. But they kind of overshot their shot. And then they realized they overshot their shot. And they were like, oh, wait a second take it back we need to reassess and who knows maybe in the future they're going to come out with something different but similar to what we were because we were a guinea yeah. pig program yeah, it was like a think tank idea thing exactly it, wasn't, it was like a prototype thing i think it works really well um, i think so too coming from the perspective of like because you everyone else in the group that in the program that we were in everyone else had kind of an established facebook group or Facebook community that they had a bunch of engagement with. Whereas me, I was coming in because I was my mom. My mom was spearheading all of it. And I was like her assistant. But then Mm -hmm. at the same time, I had been assigned a admin role on a community page. So I 
like got into it because I was associated, but then I actually also started learning from it type mm -hmm. of thing. And yeah, it just sucks that it had to go, but I am appreciative that it brought me new friends. Yeah. Yeah. Cause it's weird because everyone there for the most part was kind of older mm -hmm. and we were like the only three young people. And so yeah. we would always sit next to each other <laughs> and like have young people chat, which I thought was really fun. Yo, yeah. Facebook had some dope snacks though. Dude, dope snacks. Dude, also Facebook headquarters is like bomb. Yeah, like that yeah, place is dope. cool. It is dope. And I hope one day you guys get to look at the Facebook headquarters in um, California because like Austin was cool. California is a whole nother level. Like I'm that down. stuff was crazy. Give me my blue check mark. I'll, I'll message the Zuck make it happen. <laughs> Yeah, we yeah. uh I, I do miss it. Like I can't wait until this is all over and so we can all hang out in person. Cause initially that was the thing. Like we were gonna hang out regularly, but then in March, like it Everything just shit happened. hit the fan and it was yeah. like, Oh, okay, well, that's yeah. a thing. It's kinda like it was just I feel like we it was meant for us to do it this way because we thought about it in December. And then I was like, actually I'm going out of the country for a week, yes, so yes, I won't yes. be here. And then when I came back then we were all busy some for something and then we didn't talk to each other for like a month and then we brought it back up in march and then corona hit and yeah, like, here God, we are damn it uh, where'd you go i went to canada i went to calgary oh. alberta and i spent a week there by myself for my birthday and like by yourself by yourself by or? myself by myself i solo traveled yo that's some adult shit right there that's what i'm saying yeah, you <laughs> wait did so you stayed like at a hotel or like i a did oh nice yes i booked everything like i went in december i booked everything in october and i stayed in a hotel that had free breakfast so i didn't have to worry about paying for breakfast at another place and i planned excursions for myself and i spent my birthday and new year's over there by myself so what did you uh like what was the average day like for you um so each day was different so i'll go through every day for you because i love reliving well, i this. fucking fall apart if i'm by myself oh my goodness <laughs> and also i'm still like i do semi i i do vlog whenever i travel and i take forever editing those vlogs like i still have not posted a vlog from this trip that i took in december so i love talking about it because i'm still looking at footage from it as i try to edit on my free time that i have yeah. none of mm -hmm. and so i went a couple days before my birthday and so the first two days were just me kind of getting used to the area because i was staying in a hotel downtown calgary which was where the airport was so i just walked around explored that they also had a tower like we have in san antonio the tower of americas um theirs wasn't as cool as ours because ours at least in the elevator you can see the outside as you go up the one in canada didn't have any glass windows for you to look outside it was just a tv screen sounds about right right yeah um and then i went to this place called lake louise and it's a fro it's a lake but of course in winter it's completely frozen and you can actually go ice skating on the lake and that was my main reason for going to Canada because I just wanted to visit this lake. Dope. I was going to say you went in December, so it must have been frozen. Yes, it was frozen. And I went on my birthday and I treated myself and I went ice skating on the lake, on the lake fell flat, busted ass, just fell straight on my knees, got the biggest bruise oh literally within the first day of my trip. And then one day I went to the zoo because I love zoos and I am also got a discount because I work at a zoo. At a zoo. Shout out yeah. to San Antonio Zoo. Yeah, Shout out a, to San Antonio Zoo. I just like, did the oh drive man. through zoo. You did? How did you like it? I still it was, have not done it, and I work there. It was so fast. They it, made it yeah, sound like true. it was going to be like an hour or two. Oh, yeah, no. It, it was it, like 30 it, minutes, maybe. Yeah, it's super short because they can't – there's a lot of – like, there's a lot of the zoo you don't see on the drive through zoo right. because yeah. there's no way a car could get up there at yeah. all. Um, but it's at least something, and it's at least helping the zoo. Yeah, I would say like fifty percent of the zoo. Yeah, it it's really a good cool. portion. I like, and it. you get to see like a lot of the active animals too. Yeah, it was a lot. And of, I feel like in a way, you kind of get to see like a higher view of the animals. There's a lot yeah. of birds, reptiles, yes. like mm -hmm. crocodiles and stuff, turtles, mm -hmm. but the tigers and stuff you could see. So that was like, I mean, that's yeah. kind of like why you go. 
Yeah. Lions, tigers, and bears. Oh my. Dude, they're all right next to each exactly. other. Oh, I guess the bears are not. Well, right. the bears are at the entrance, and then the lions, yeah. the lions and tigers are right next to each other. Yeah. But that's about it. But yeah, so I forgot where I was going. Oh, I went to the zoo, and then one day I went to a wolf dog sanctuary. Oh my God. And I spent the entire day there, and I was freezing my butt off, but I was also in complete awe at how beautiful wolf dogs are. Because they're huge, aren't they? They are huge, and then there's like three different types of wolf dogs, and it's like high, low, high, medium, low, and it's like high... um, designated by how much wolf content they have in them yeah so you have the high ones that are more wolf than dog medium is like equal balance and low is like they're more dog than wolf i have a wolf and then right here look at that cutie <laughs> yeah cute so i did that one. that was pretty cool learned that people illegally trade wolf dogs and a lot of those wolf dogs that are illegally traded and missold i guess is the term or like sold incorrectly um they're sold as like regular dogs yeah they're sold as regular dogs and then the people get these dogs and then they don't know how to take care of these dogs because they're massive and also require high maintenance care yeah and they end up at the sanctuary so sad yeah yeah oh my goodness (laughs) just curled up so while you're out there, did you have like a Canadian uh, boyfriend that you were hanging out with over there? You know, I did not. I definitely saw all the beautiful Canadian people and I was just like, man, you're cute. I could go talk to you. But also the awkward, shy person in me was like, yeah, no, I'm not talking to people. Like, no, thank you. I yeah, did I'll talk to one cute bartender. I talked to one cute bartender who served me my drink. We talked about where I was from, and then I said I was from Texas, and he was like, oh, do you know so-and-so? And And I'm like, what? No. (laughs) He goes, oh, yeah, they're from this part of Texas. I'm like, no, I'm from San Antonio. Yeah, it's a big state. There's only millions of people. Like a billion people. I think Texas Texas might have a bigger population than Canada. Yeah. It might. I might. (laughs) I'm going to look it up right now. (laughs) I feel like probably Canada has a lot more because Canada has like what five different states. I think it's like provinces, lots of yeah. Lots I call them states, uh, whatever. The way it's written down is like it's a state type of thing. Canada, but yeah, they have us be by a, a, a day. <laughs> by a fair margin. They 37. have thirty-seven million. We have twenty-eight. Okay, but that's still relatively close. It's pretty, that's, yeah, pretty yeah close. in terms of a population, yeah, how yeah. Big But it was so cool. And then, yeah, so I went to the sanctuary and then I went to my first ever professional hockey game. Oh, wow. In Canada. In Canada. Like, yeah, I you kind of have to do it. Was it it NHL? It was NHL. Yeah, it was the Calgary Flames versus the Chicago team. So I was there rooting for Calgary because I was in Calgary. But I was also like, damn. I'm a citizen of the United States. I should also be going for (laughs) Chicago. Yeah. How dare you? Hello, Leonardo. Yeah, you betrayed our beautiful nation for those Canadians. You know, and okay, this is like the highlight of my trip. I was being very frugal with my money. Did you smoke the devil's lettuce? I did not. And I never have smoked the devil's lettuce, actually. In fact, yeah. yeah. I've smelled a lot of it because I was an RA. In college, <laughs> so I definitely know what it smells like. We should all get together to do it for the show. <laughs> I don't even want to imagine it's how that would end up. Live. <laughs> the devil's lettuce. Our live reaction to the giggle bush. <laughs> Sean says, "Sure, sure. the Dean thing has never done it." Dude, Dean, can we talk about your? Yeah, your my... <laughs> wait, Dean, can we talk about your uh, experience with Romaine? Um, uh, a certain type of. <laughs> Edible food. Yeah. <laughs> Can we talk I've about that? I've done mushrooms. You've I've done never... shrooms. Okay, I've never done anything. Dude, Dean, tell us the I've ever... Well, no, I did salvia, but that was before it was illegal. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, I've never. Uh, done tell us about the shrooms. Tell us about the shrooms, dude. It was wild. <laughs> it was wild. Dude. I need the whole story. You told it to me one time, and it was like the greatest story I've ever. Heard. I like, need to know the story. It was like Alice in Wonderland meets Napoleon. I was, dude, in fact, <laughs> after I started the day, so my friend Katie was like, "If you want to do mushrooms, 
I will watch you. So you have someone sober. That's make, smart. Care of you. Yeah, yeah. We're we're responsible. Uh, we're responsible adults. There you go. Oh, I got a drug story after this. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> so I, I ate it, and it, they're terrible. I mean, I mean, you know shrooms in general are terrible. Okay, like well, mushrooms in general are terrible. A thousand times worse. Oh, man. Oh. Uh, my friend Katie was like, "Oh, I'll make you a Nutella sandwich with the mushrooms in it." So you can't really taste the mushrooms. You can still taste them; they're terrible. And uh, I was like, "Hey, I want to watch Alice in Wonderland because that's supposed to be like wild, right?" And that's a <laughs> short movie; Trippy. it's not long at all. So the movie ends. I was like, "I don't feel any different." So I ate some more. Probably not. Oh my different. goodness. <clears throat> so um my friend was like well maybe you just need to get your blood pumping so we should go like on a hike or something i was like all right she's like i know the perfect spot so there's a dam uh do you know where the dam in almost park is yes the, i like i work nearby so i've driven yeah, by it exactly. okay. yeah. you can walk under it mm-hmm. there's Wait. A trail. oh okay yes okay and you could go behind it or under the street that drives in front of it yeah so we went up in there and it's crazy. Um, and so like by the time we get down to the the grass area, it was in like full effect. Oh my <laughs> and it was like, oh my, like everything, like everything was like still, but mm-hmm. like you could see like the, the plants breathing. Like it was like, <laughs> oh my god, like they they're alive, like nature is real. <laughs> Wow, I mean, and, yeah, okay. yeah, and like okay. My, my arms were like, I don't even know how to describe it. It was like, <laughs> it's like my inner being was like glowing, and like my my flesh was like see through. So, were you in a way having an out of body experience type of thing? It was very much no, maybe like existential. Okay. Crisis. <laughs> what? <laughs> Uh, and I was like, oh, my God, this is so fun. Like, we should get more. <laughs> oh, my, my goodness. Was like, we can if you want to. I was like, yes. So we get in her car, <laughs> and she's driving me to the guy. And she was like, I could get some for me, and we could go back to my house. By then, my boyfriend will be off, and he could watch us. And she literally had a room in her house set up for doing mushrooms. Whoa. She had this, like, big, like, tapestry blankets, like, all along it was like a garage that was converted into a room but they didn't okay. use anything. so it's just like psychedelic blankets everywhere on the walls and wow hanging. that's a trip and so i was like let's do that that sounds awesome like we could just lay there for hours so we're like getting money at the bank and her mom yeah. pulled up <laughs> what are you guys doing and i was just like nothing <laughs> So she was her mom is like really like laid back so she's like yeah like whatever so she leaves and like I, I we're listening to music and like i just got like so emotional like i mean you you you're riding these waves oh my goodness and i started crying and i was like i just want to go home and my friend was like yeah we could whatever you want to do she's really supportive and uh on the way to our house, we got rear-ended. Like, ugly. What? I was I was trying to explain the movie Interstellar, which is hard enough. <laughs> that is, uh, yeah, that movie's already yeah, hard that's enough a hard movie to, to explain. explain sober. <laughs> and so yep. I, I, was, I remember, like, vividly, I was explaining the part where they're on the water planet, and the time dilation is different. Mm-hmm. And then I just remember, like, everything, like... Like I was seeing like in widescreen. I was like, whoa. <laughs> and that's because we'd gotten rear-ended and I was like flying backwards. <laughs> oh my gosh. And then whoo, it all like all at once just comes back. And we're like <laughs> flying towards the car in front of us. And luckily my friend Katie is a really good driver. She's she managed to stop us from rear-ending the car in front of us. But oh my god, dude, like wow. I was <laughs> I was in so much pain because everything is like amplified. Manny said you probably had a stroke. Scott Bradley <laughs> says, hi, Eileen. Big fan of your podcast. Hi, Scott. Thank you so much. 
Oh uh, my god, Dean, this is the greatest story. Yeah, and, this uh, is really yeah. The shrimp, dude, everything's amplified your senses, your emotions. So like, I was like in a lot of pain, but I was like, I don't know if I'm in pain because of the accident or because. I'm just on shrooms. Oh my goodness. Thank you so much, Leonardo. What? Yeah, I mean, like, sponsorship ASAP to keep Rose a regular sweet angel. Yeah. Danny, I'll go half these with you. <laughs> and uh, so I'm like sitting there, like in the car. The girl, she was like, I don't know, 16. She's in tears because she just probably got into her first wreck. Probably. Yeah. Wait, how old were you in this scenario? It's a good question. The 16 year old has a house with a fucking mushroom room. No, 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 no. The sixteen-year-old year old that hit. That oh, they were okay. In the I was like, "Yo, this sixteen-year-old." Come on, Zach. Wild. Keep up. No, Keep I up. Like, I, was like I, was, 20... I was trying to read the comments that were showing us. <laughs> I was anywhere between twenty-three and twenty-six. I don't remember. Okay, okay. That, I have funny. the pictures on my Instagram. I'll go back and look. Hell yeah. Um, but uh, so I'm sitting there and like I was like, "Oh, the ambulance will be here." I don't know if I should like go <laughs> or not. And then I was like. Oh no, that means the cops are gonna be here. And then I started freaking out. And luckily, my dad was a cop for my whole life. And he always told me, like, if anything happens, <clears throat> just shut the fuck up and sit down. Because <laughs> if you're standing and you're swaying, yeah, they're gonna think drunk, something's up. Probably talking shit. He's like, shut the fuck up and sit down. That way you just look normal. And I was like, I'm just gonna do that. And it worked out. And we ended up <laughs> her car was totaled, but um, dang. Yeah, the back seat ended up like on my seat. I mean, it was oh shit! Was wow, shit out of us, dude. Wow. Um, yeah, I didn't, but yeah, I didn't, I didn't get hurt from that accident. So probably because I was on mushrooms, but uh, <laughs> you probably didn't feel any of it. Never if again. You did yeah. yeah. We went. <laughs> we we ended up getting back to her house, and she's like, "Well, what do you want to do?" And I still didn't feel normal, so I was like. Can we just like watch something funny? Like I just I I just want to get this over with. So I think <laughs> we watched like Mr. Deeds or something, but Good it was right I never again. I haven't done anything since. Dang. Like, no, that's it. And you see, that's like an epic story though. It was like clearly God's way of telling me stop. <laughs> Don't it. do it. Yeah. Don't I was do like, it. message received. I'm never doing your shit again. <laughs> wow man my story really. sucks compared to that one i know I it's like who, who can go after that i should have told mine first that's not fair <laughs> no i want to hear yours now okay i know so, you definitely have to still so, um when i used to work uh in san marcus uh, i was living in san antonio so i would drive up for the weekend and like couch surf for like three days and then come back because i was uh doing summer school for college in uh san antonio but I still had a job in San Marcos because oh. I was getting ready for the next semester. And uh, my friends did that. I was staying with did a lot of weed. Like I, I do not know how people could function doing that much weed, but they were wealthy and like they lived in, or they like lived in a house that their parents owned. That was like their second house. So they didn't have to work. And uh, like pretty much they just got high all the time and so uh it was a saturday and i got called that evening and they were like hey we're not going to use your shift on sunday so you know enjoy your day off mm -hmm. and i was like you know i could just go home now or i could just stay another night and then just leave in the morning and i remember they were so excited they were like we got all this weed like we got it at a great price and we're gonna make edibles like brownies and like just whatever they wanted to make and again they they're people that do drugs like lots and lots of drugs so they were like probably gonna make some crazy ass shit some yeah but they're happen. also the kind of people that are like fuck it like let's put this much in there and then it'll just work and so uh steven kretz says one time i popped three moltron like and, how, uh, <laughs> how strong were those moltron uh manny says i popped three advil and chased it with the diet dr b yeah <laughs> and so I uh, I remember they're like, hey, do you want to hang out with us tonight? We're going to make some edibles. And I was like, it was like that scene from Iron Man 1 where, um, what's his name? Rhodey's like, next time. And I walked out. And I came back <laughs> Sunday morning because I stayed with another friend. And they were fucking gone. Like, they're like, we fucked it up. We, like, 
quadrupled the concentration somehow. We we were just adding shit left and right, and oh. they were fucking gone. They were like puking and like like the highest that I've ever seen anyone. And wow. I was like, you guys need to go to like a hospital. Like, what do you, you do? Need to like, get I don't do these drugs. <laughs> I don't smoke the devil's lettuce and, and they had eaten a lot of this edible that was already too powerful to begin with. And they were just like, it was just an, a, the, the craziest thing I've ever seen. I've never, I don't know. I just, it was just crazy. And I'm so glad I didn't cause I don't do that. And I probably would have yeah. died because that like, if they were freaking out from that much THC mm-hmm. and they're people that smoke that shit every day, like all day. Yeah. My poor little angel, yeah. angelic heart. I would have died. Yeah. Oh, wow. I, would, I was that 25, is, by the way. What? You were 25? Yeah. yeah. I was like, what are you doing, man? I'm, I'm telling this story. I was doing that, man. <laughs> You're not invested. Yeah. It was wild. It was. That was crazy. Was crazy yeah. Ass, so. I don't have any crazy drug stories because I've never done any besides the ones that I get pumped before I go into surgery or anything. What about, do you have any drinking stories? Yeah, um, stuff drinking store. What's your favorite drink? Stories. Okay, so I, you know, things are changing now with me um, because, <laughs> you know. Manny says my aunt ate a waist <laughs> brownie once as she was in bed <laughs> at 7.30. <laughs> Sometimes it, it has the opposite it was effect. The, it was Theo Pete's <laughs> brownie. <laughs> Uh, um drinking story i would have to probably say so my go-to drink is a malibu and sprite i love me my rum just give me some rum and i'm good to go i just started keto though so i have to rethink all of my drinking choices so that's to come eventually figuring out what alcohol i can have rip yeah i know honestly um but then when i was in college I ne- I have never gotten blackout drunk. I've only I think actually like technically been drunk once, and it was my freshman year of college. Um, I think I might have told this story a couple of times, so it's out there already in the universe that I was underage drinking. But then again, who isn't an underage drinking in who college? Hasn't? Who exactly. Hasn't? Exactly. And I'm definitely way above the age now. So there's that. Yeah, the statute of limitations is way mm-hmm. so Here, we I'm went logging into FBI.gov real quick. <laughs> We're just gonna report a tip. They're already listening to us anyways. Ooh, we gotta talk What's about TikTok too after this. Oh yes, we're gonna we're gonna oh, get man. into all the things. Um so, hold on, I'm reading. My cousin took Manny two brownie trays. My cousin took two brownie trays for Thanksgiving and she grabbed the wrong one. No lie. They were covered <laughs> in put away IDK as she found them. One was weed, the other one were normal. It's incredible. Oh my goodness. That's crazy. But yeah, so we were on our way to a frat party because, again, I'm a freshman girl in college. We only ever went to frat parties. Where'd you go to college? And there, I went to Texas State. Oh, yeah. also, oh my gosh. Shout go Bobcats. Out. That's a party Shout school. Out. I knew I See, loved okay. I knew everyone it. I, there was said, something about you. I just knew it. See, okay. This is my thing with people saying Texas State is a party school. Every college is a party school. Yeah, but that Texas State's like a real Every party college. School. I had I, college. more of my friends got in trouble at Texas State than they did at UT. <laughs> and so I we went out one night and it was my first time getting drunk. And I remember that's the night my friends found out what kind of drunk person I was. Oh, no. And I was the paranoid drunk. Oh, shit. And so I'm one very much that's like, oh, I care about what my parents think. And then again, I'm at Texas State, which is like 40 minutes away from home. I yeah. was close to home, but I was far enough away. And so we would be getting in the car after the party and I was sitting in the back seat, and I just remember sitting like so still and trying to act so normal as the car's just driving normally. And I'm like, you guys, every time I saw some little glimmer of like a red or blue light, I'd just be like, you guys, we can't, we can't get stopped. We can't. I drank tonight. I'm drunk. I my mom can't see me like this. If the cops stop us, they're gonna call my mom, and then everything's gonna go to shit. You guys, we can't do it. We can't do it. And I was just paranoid the whole night until my friends got me to go to sleep. That was that was that night. That's my wildest story so far because I'm one of those people who drinks. And then once I start to feel the room spinning, I'm like, okay, yeah, we're going to stop. We're going to drink some water now Yeah. because I'm like too scared or I get anxiety thinking about 
going past that point of the room spinning and so much yeah. other stuff is happening. I only have one crazy story that I like even I can't believe I did it because I don't I don't really drink alcohol. I I can't even guess the last time I like even sipped alcohol. Um it really does, Quinn. But I, I used to like. DJ um professionally. And we were going to go DJ in Laredo. And I went with two uh, DJs that DJed on the radio. And then they both had across the street from each other DJ and competing nightclubs. Okay. And so I was just going to go with them and like open. Well, that morning I had woken up like really early. I like got no sleep. So we drive to Laredo. It takes, you know, a few hours. We get to the the radio station early so we have to sit there for an hour like bored then dj the like rush hour mix Mm -hmm. that took like an hour and then we got to the hotel and then i was like all right well we're here for a few hours um because we don't go on till like midnight which was insane i was like midnight you're only gonna party for two hours they're like yeah and i was like all right I was like, well, I am not driving. I have no, res- I don't have any of equipment. Like, I'm free range to do whatever the fuck I want. So I started pre-gaming at the hotel. <laughs> so we get to the bar. I DJ my set. And uh, the the DJ that had taken me introduced me to the owner of the club. And the owner was like, hey, everybody, like all the bartenders, these guys are guests. And if they don't have a drink in their hand, you make sure they have a drink in their hand. Wow. So I was I was drinking a lot. And then the girl that went with us was like, I can't drink this. Can you drink it? I don't want to seem rude. I was like, yeah, whatever. Oh, man. So, Manny, remember Manny's story? Ruby said, on my 21st birthday, I got so drunk and I peed in my brother's room next to his bed. Peep out uh, and all. Remember we were at his bachelor party and his brother was telling us that? Yeah. He just like walked into his brother's room and peed on the floor. Oh my goodness. <laughs> yeah. So, oh, so I was like sitting at the bar and I was like, okay, I've definitely had too much to drink. I was getting to that point. Um, unfortunately for me, I was already past that point. I just hadn't caught up yet, if that makes sense. So, okay. someone brings me a shot of Jaeger. Oh. I take the shot of Jaeger. I was like, yeah, this is, that's, that was bad. Um, I mean, they're going to, pee my pants or puke at the bar both of which i don't want to (laughs) do i don't want to embarrass not only myself but the people that brought me here so i'm gonna find the bathroom so i go to the bathroom and i i pee and i'm so drunk my pants just like fall to the floor and i like sit down on the toilet and i just (laughs) pass out because i'd like gotten no sleep and so i wake up and my phone is like blowing up and it's the DJs. They're like, dude, where the fuck are you? Like, it's Laredo. You're not, you don't usually drink. So, like, they're genuinely concerned. Yeah. They're like <laughs> leaving the club. They'll like change the song and then run outside to see if they can find me. <laughs> and then the other DJ is running across the street from his bar. And they're like, dude, where are you? And I wake up and I'm like, guys, I'm in the bathroom. <laughs> and they're like, you're definitely not in the bathroom because we were just in there. And I was like, I'm in a bath. I'm on a toilet. So like, let me just like walk out. So I like open the door. There's the longest line of women I've ever seen waiting to get into this bathroom. <laughs> I had, I had been asleep for like 35 minutes. Oh, wow. And, no way. <laughs> luckily Dude, there was- oh my gosh. I got thrown out of a bachelor party at Manny's bachelor party. <laughs> You're wearing this fucking hat, dude. It was like yeah. 30 degrees outside. We were sitting outside. And I went to uh, get my card back from the bartender, and I got kicked out. The guy's like, "You got to leave, young man." I'm like, like, "Why?" He's like, "He's like, you're wearing a hat," and I'm like, "So?" And he's like, "You can't do that here." I'm like, "Bro, this is not like that nice of a bar for you to be kicking me out for." Yeah. Not only that, but I've been here for hours already. (laughs) Yeah, I've been fucking drinking for hours. Fucking guy. Yeah. So that's what happened. I had fallen asleep in the women's bathroom. Wow. I got a drinking story. I got a drinking story. So yeah, let's um, go. So uh, I own uh, an Omega watch, right? And that's the watch brand that James Bond, Daniel Craig wears. Mm -hmm. And so whenever there's a new James Bond movie, the Omega boutique will have like a get together, like they'll rent out a whole, uh, like a theater. 
not the whole theater, but like one, what do you call it, auditorium? And they'll put on an event. So they'll be like, you know, like a, this was my first one. So we got the VIP passes. Uh, we pick them up at the boutique the day before. And they're like, yeah, we'll be like, you know, we'll be in the front. Like, you can't miss us. So we get there and uh, we have like this like lanyard with the James Bond logo. And it's like, like almost like two days before the movie is supposed to come out. So it's like a real like premiere, so to speak. Mm-hmm. And we get there and they're like, hey, uh, you need to go over here, like separate from the ticket kiosk because you have this little lanyard. And so I'm thinking like, man, these guys really went all out. There's like models, you know, you take the picture in front of the backdrop and there's ice sculptures. I'm like, man, this is dope. They started giving us drinks and they're like, here's your drink tickets. But if you need more, just come back to us. And the whole time I'm drinking, I'm like four or five drinks in and I'm like, man, this is dope. I'm starting to feel it. And I'm like, but where's all the people that work in the boutique? Like, I feel like they should be here by now. So my dad, they're like, hey, you need to go upstairs. They have like this whole like because downstairs is mostly the bar. There's a bar upstairs, but they're like, go upstairs. And there's um, like like food, like chicken tenders and like like kind of like finger foods. So I'm like, damn, they they really want out. We're eating, we're eating, we're eating. And I check my phone. I'm like super drunk. And my friend is like, hey, where the hell are you guys at? The movie's about to start. And I'm like what and they're like yeah we're like downstairs like in this auditorium so i what everything that i was experiencing was like this other company's <laughs> event and they just thought that we were there for their <laughs> event and so i'm thinking like man their their shit must be really nice i mean these motherfuckers sell like thirty thousand dollar watches yeah and we get there and there's like here's your drink cup and it was like a small cup and they're like and here's your popcorn and that was it. And I was like, what the fuck? Like, I was getting wined and dined <laughs> by the fucking this other company with ice sculptures and models and everything. And <laughs> like, I'm about to be yeah, them. They just, yeah, they did. Like, I'm going to go watch the movie with those guys. Uh, wow. Yeah, I was, uh, it was very embarrassing because they're like, so where'd weird. you guys get all this food from? Because <laughs> we had, like, you know, you could take the food in the theater and it was like, I was like, oh, we bought, we bought it. Yeah. Wow. But yeah, no one, and it just shows to show you because they didn't even really check anything. Like if you just walk in with a little bit of confidence to almost anything, you'll get right in. It's very valid. It's very valid. (laughs) I lack too, I lack too much of confidence in those situations. So they could easily be like, "Mm, you don't belong here. Nope. Keep moving. Wow. What great conversations. I cannot believe how much fun this was. Stay tuned and see what more fun we got into on the next episode. Y'all can like and subscribe, rate, review, listen to wherever you listen to your podcast, and until the next one, bye!